One Reaction with Evie, and welcome back to The Daily. One Reaction here on June 21st, and we got a bunch of topics we got to get to, but the biggest game of last night, we had Game 7 with the 76ers and Hawks, and the 76ers were favored by 7, expected to win big, and they didn't. And you, you saw it, there were six, 17 turnovers from the Philadelphia six, 76ers. They didn't get back on defense. They just looked sloppy to me. And I'll get into this a little bit later, but I think that loss, as much as it falls on Ben Simmons, falls on Doc Rivers as well. Uh, you can't just let Joel Embiid go from 20 feet and, and expect him to get a shot. Tobias Harris, one of the worst games. He was 8 for 24, did not look good, had easy shots that he just missed. If he was on, they would have won. I mean, there's a lot of ways that uh, Philly could have won this game, but you got to give all the credit in the world to Atlanta. But the Ben Simmons conundrum continues. Now he has five points, eight rebounds, 13 assists. Biggest play of the game. They're up. They're down 88-86. Simmons has a wide open layup, gives it up to Thibel. Thibel forces a shot, and it's a foul. So he shoots one of two from the line. They could have tied it at 88. Instead, it was 88-87. That will be a remembered play for a long time with Ben Simmons. Uh, and Bede, and then after the game, and Bede and Rivers come out, both questionable press conferences that basically called out Simmons for his poor play. So I just feel like my gut feeling from this is that this can't be solved. It feels like Simmons and Embiid, after losing this series to a third-year Hawks team that is three months in with Coach McMillan, and they didn't have Bogdanovich or DeAndre Hunter, they lost again. So I just feel like this is done. I, I think Daryl Morey is going to go in a different direction. And I think he's going to ship Simmons out. I think he deserves to be shipped out. And then you talk about who who's that going to be for. Uh, the most logical sense move for both teams would be CJ, which I've read a lot. So that would be CJ for Simmons. Then you put Simmons and Lillard. Uh, Lillard finally gets defense in Portland. And then CJ in Philly. Now you have a bunch of shooters around Embiid and let him go to work. Harris can run the point. McCollum can run the point. you got Curry too. So I kind of like that for Philadelphia, but you don't have a true point guard in that sense. Uh, I just don't feel like Simmons and Embiid can play together right now. you got to get Simmons into a new system. His confidence, his mental, that's why he missed that. That's why he passed it. His, his mental game is just shot right now, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him. Uh, I think my opinion on this is that the loss falls on Doc Rivers as well. 2020 Clippers, uh, they lose after going down 3-1. And then 2021 Clippers, Ty Lue's bringing them to the uh, conference finals without their best player, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, this year, for Philadelphia, they lose to a much worse team. It just shows that Doc Rivers is just not a great coach. He really isn't. And in his past couple of years, he had, in the losses in the, at home this series, they had 16-plus turnovers, 17 in Game 7, and just kept up giving easy shots. That's coaching. That's coaching. Uh, and the offense, I don't love. It's just getting uh, and beat up top. I just don't love that at all. I think that's a question of preparation. I just didn't think these guys were in the right position to win. They, he didn't use his personnel correctly, and he kind of got bailed out from Seth Curry shooting all those threes a little bit. So Philly was much more talented. They didn't win. Clippers were much more talented last year. They didn't win against the Nuggets. So a lot of questions falling under Doc Rivers. Hawks, let's talk about it. Bad game from Trey Young, but the confidence he showed to hit that dagger three, put the game out of reach, but all the credit in the world goes to Kevin Herter. He had a big 27 points. Collins uh, consistent uh, defensively and on the boards. He, he, I think a beat healthy, he's going to do better against Collins, but Collins had a really nice job against an injured Embiid. And now let's, let's turn to this Milwaukee series that will start Wednesday. I think the matchup to watch is definitely Drew Holiday. Versus Trey Young. Holiday is one of the best defenders in the league. He's gotten a little old. So we talk about does he have the speed to stick with him. Uh, then you got Collins versus Giannis. Can Collins do what he did against Embiid? That will be interesting. <laughs> but I think the main question will be Middleton. Middleton has a really nice matchup in this series with Bogdanovich Hurt. No DeAndre Hunter. I don't know what you do if you're Atlanta. You're going to have to play Tony Snell, who will struggle offensively. So that kind of takes some, uh, someone out. So then can kind of hide one of your players defensively. You can bring in Forbes, hide him defensively. So there's a lot the the Bucks have to do matchup-wise. I think they're the heavy favorite. I think Middleton has a big series. and But you can't count out this uh, Hawks team. I mean, they need Bogdanovich to get healthy to have a chance against Milwaukee. Suns Clips, uh, game one. How about Booker? I mean, he had 40-11-13, top 10 guy. It feels like it if they win, uh, but I'm not going to overreact at all. 
Uh, you saw this in the Clippers with the first two series. This is the let's experiment with 11 guys because we're not expected to win game from Ty Lue. He's one of He's a top five coach. We've seen it all playoff long. They'll be just fine. They're not playing Cousins again. They're not doing some of the things they, di they did. I think they're going to go small most of the time. I think they're going to put Eaton in tougher situations. And I think with no Chris Paul here in game two, if that's the case, I kind of like the Clips to win. I, I really do. I think two of the three, which, which I've talked about, you need two of the three, either uh, besides Paul George to have a big game, then you need Jackson, Batum, Morris, Matt. Two of those four, two of the four, uh, with Mann coming on strong. Two of the four to have a big game. Uh, they only got one in game one. I think they get two. It was only a loss by six with Eaton, uh, Booker playing out of his life. I think they're going to pressure him more. Eaton's the key, of course. But I think once Paul comes back, then the series changes a bit. But right now, I kind of like the Clippers in game two because I think they found some stuff that works. And I like Ty Lue to make some adjustments in game two. That's on Tuesday night. U.S. Open. John Rahm, what a story. I mean, the COVID mess from a couple weeks ago to winning and coming back. I mean, those putts on 17 and 18 were awesome to win his first major. Unbelievable. So happy for him. That is his, his first major. Let's turn to the NHL playoffs. Vegas, Montreal. Uh, this was a very interesting game. Vegas, not good at all uh, until the third period offensively. But the main storyline, Robert Leonard coming out, despite all the critics and his game one performance against Colorado in that last series, coached DeBoer, trusted him, and he came up big here. He had... 27 saves, a big 27 saves, one goal allowed. Huge game. Golden Knights steal one in Montreal. Not their best night. I think they come out with vengeance in game five. They definitely have the upper edge now. Key for Montreal can be how can they adjust because their defense played fantastic. Fantastic. They just got to get by. I think this this game was more about Robin Leonard than Montreal. I think they'll be just fine. But it's going to be see, very interesting to see what Montreal does to counter this move by Vegas because they were the better. Montreal is the better team tonight. Vegas got the win. We got tonight, Lightning Islanders. Power play is going to be huge. Can Isles pressure Tampa Bay on the power penalty kill or avoid the penalties all together? That's a key. I think the Isles need to help Barzell a little bit, use his speed around the ice. And then it's going to be about who can crack the other defense and goaltender because both teams have elite defense and elite goaltender. So it's going to be about Isles, get guys to the net, get physical. Lightning, avoid the defenders and get your shooters going and stop the Islanders from blocking your shots and clogging up those passing lanes. Should be a fun one. Tonight, no basketball tonight, but a big weekend altogether. So one reaction, but leaving the daily one.